Hi right, folks, welcome to the blacksmith shop. Today we're working on something similar to our fireplace set. So I have to acknowledge my error. I thought over here in our maintenance shop we had some half inch steel bars, square stock. We don't. Instead we have half inch hollow bars. That's okay. It means I need to call up our local steel mills and find us some solid stock so we can work on those handles and other things we need for our fireplace set. And the idea of a fireplace set, we have a tool here that kind of juggles between blocks. So whoever's cooking likes to use it and it's a blowpipe. Think about a fire whenever you're pulling the bellows or anything like that, someone's sitting there trying to, well this focuses it. So take a hollow stock and I need to fatten that end. So what's a nice fat round? Because that metal's hot, it's stretching without breaking. Now I'm getting a little bit of a bend, so a little bit more. Move it up again. The idea is to put a good larger hole at one end, and I'll taper this one down. We'll probably do that off camera. Here for this one down to focus the heat. You can put that pipe in your mouth and blow air and focus it where you're trying to get that fire started. But to do that, I want to get a nice good round. And my goal with a pair of these, we no longer will have to fight and or not, we don't really fight. But wonder where it went and it's across the street at the log house or where'd it go and it's across the street at the main houses where they're cooking on Saturdays. We'll have a couple of these things. Now comes the fun part. You see how I've made that a little bit larger? All I'm doing is a little straightening there. Now that I've made that nice and big, now I'm really going to flare it. To do that, I'm actually going to use my, my ball feeding. I'm going to stick it down in my hearty hole to give me a little bit more. There you go. Big thank you to my cameraman today, Haskell from the Delta School. He's been coming on some Tuesdays to learn. You see how I'm flaring that out nice and big. Because I've got it hot, it never rips or tears or makes any sharp spots that could hit our fingers. So I'm gonna do one more heat on that, and then I'll kind of, I'll quench it and I'll show you kind of sort of how it works. probably file that a little bit smoother but we're wanting, we're wanting to do it'll work perfect quench that end now if everybody put their metal on that that'd be nasty so after I taper that on camera what you do is you put your hand over one end and Now I don't have to get right up on the fire and 
focus it all in one tube. So it's a very handy fireplace tool that we use all the time. It tapers the, the, the air. And I'll taper that down here in a minute off camera. Now, I want to talk about our show and tell and what all we got today. We got a wide variety of guys that have brought stuff. Come on over here from a... This tool has caused some controversy in the shop today. It is a timber framing chisel. James, what did you call this? Spud. A spud or a? Slick. Spud or a slick. And it all depends on its context of use. A slick is on boats, correct? Mm -hmm. And a spud is? Removing the bark. Just removing bark. But I always thought this was a timber framing chisel. How to make your log straight when you're making a log cabin. So if you have a opinion, tell me, is it a slick, a spud, or a chisel? Let's see, Mr. Robert brought this. What is this, Robert? Stretch wire into smaller bits of wire if you wire's too big. Ah, just like our uh, die, I guess. Our die, but it's a smaller die for copper Draw wire. Die. Huh? Drawing die. A draw die. There you go. I'm making more progress on my Damascus blade. We got a couple of uh, kitchen knives from uh, J.M. Stevens that are in progress, looking great. We decided to have some vegetable cutting com competition later. It's Who brought also mashed up and used as a uh, patina for oh, the Japanese you. knife patinas. They'll mash awesome. up a daikon radish and then maybe copper sulfate or Drano or other odd stuff mixed in with it and get blues or grays or browns. Peter, come here and tell me what you've got today. Uh, I got a little bit of pep. <laughs> now these, these are uh, some Japanese sword guards and I brought them because we look at iron blacksmith um, iron finishes of various kinds. And these are nice old, several hundred year old iron finishes that are that are part of the aesthetic of these 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 uh, uh, sword guards. Now I think you and Lynn have had this discussion before, but how are they putting these decorative designs? Are they filing or sawing? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure they were essentially drilled and then care very carefully. See, that's a crest. That's a family crest mm -hmm. there. This one is a more decorative. That's a little, little shrimp. Some fine, fine lines right there. there. But, but this one is just a simple disc, disc that's got good laminations in it. But it's, it's not embellished except for its intrinsic beauty as a piece of iron and that makes perfectly good sense in Absolutely. the Historic Arkansas Museum blacksmith shop. There you go. Now for some historic knives. Mind telling us what you got today? Oh, uh, let James tell you. <laughs> well this is, I don't even know what, these are things my dad brought back from World War II. Okay. So, what kind of sword is this Peter? Well, it's a tachi. It's it's a decorative. Uh, Let's see if we can get that. Uh, an old style there you sword. go. You can see the pattern that's chiseled in there. And that's soft metal. That's not iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's doesn't even doesn't even have an edge on it. So it's made for it's just made for either wall hanging or theatrical. Yeah. It but looks like a bayonet. Do you know what it originated from? If it was a real sword, we wouldn't let you touch the blade there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and this is from what? What's it's a World War II era uh, Japanese Army bayonet. Yeah, these are both things that my dad brought back from Japan. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. All right. Well, we've got a lot of different things going on here in the shop today. Uh, very excited to show and tell, and of course, I'm sure we'll have some folks show up here in a minute. Um, don't rem uh, forget our uh, living history every Saturday. This Saturday, I'll be here in the forge. If you want to come visit, say hi. I might even make you a nail. Um, otherwise, thank you for being here in the blacksmith shop from the Historic Arkansas Museum. I'm Casey. Thanks for coming to see us.